Vincent judged me for being out here and not being inside playing Xbox. So a couple years ago, I bought an e-bike kit, and then I put together a homemade e-bike. And then I rode that e-bike a bunch of miles. And then I rebuilt that e-bike. And then I broke a thousand miles. And then I broke my arm. And then I broke down the e-bike kit and I put it on the original bike. And then I rode it even more miles. And ever since then, I haven't really ridden the e-bike much because I haven't had the desire to break my arm again. But I think the time to ride my e-bike has come again. And I think the reason it's come is because gas prices are through the roof. So let me break down what's been going on with my e-bike since this video. So it's been sitting in my backyard getting dust. And the main reason for that is a couple of spokes on the rear wheel have busted. And since I haven't felt like breaking my arm again, I haven't felt like fixing it. And I haven't felt like I've had the parts to make the e-bike safe, but I think I have all the parts now. So one of the things I have to take care of is the seat. Seat post is missing the clamp and I have a couple parts for that. I also have this nice saddle that I got off another bike. I'm not sure if it's comfortable yet because I haven't used it. I've also been needing to change the sprocket on the rear because whenever I try to pedal to keep up speed, it's just too slow. But I got a couple of different sprocket sizes here. I think it'll keep the pedals keeping up to speed. I have a brake cable that I can connect to this handle grip because this is a cruiser, so it only has the rear brake and the pedal. And I've been trying to get a brake in the front, and I think I have it. I have a kit that lets me install a disc brake to the front wheel, but the part is questionable. Now I've already started some of the prep work and I've gotten some of the parts on, but I keep on running into problems. I just keep getting this feeling I should put the e-bike onto a different bike, but I go ahead and I get the parts on, I start mounting everything, and this has me worried a lot. This just looks and feels so flimsy. Yeah, no, I just don't know how to feel about it. I go ahead and continue to work to get this disc rotor onto this new wheel anyway. For what they do, disc brakes are pretty simple machines. They're held on by six bolts to the wheel and they bolt on fairly easily and they have an automatic alignment. But the problem is with this kit that I have from the internet, the alignment isn't great. It's not clamping down onto the disc and that has me concerned. I might have to work on the alignment. I don't know, looking super sketch, right? The next day I stumble out into the backyard to try to make sense of- Oh! Stumble was supposed to be a pun, sir. I have to make sense of why this alignment just don't hit right on this disc brake or this kit. It's bothering the heck out of me. And I'm about to make what I find out is the safest decision of all. When I finally decide to abandon this particular build. But if I'm not going to build the e-bike on the cruiser, what am I going to build it on? What's that? Is that a tall twin mountain bike? It is a tall twin mountain bike, and it's not the worst basket case bike I've ever seen. It has a lot. It has brakes, which is more than I could say about the cruiser. It does have these weak standoffs on the forks, and that has me worried because I've ran into issues with standoffs before when I tried to upgrade the forks on the cruiser before. It also has these 90s style cantilever brakes. It also has a ton of rust, and that broken seat but it is a lot taller than the last mountain bike build I did because that mountain bike build was a little bit too short and at six foot five, it made it dangerous. So I think it's worth it to give this thing a try to see if it'll work. Now it's time to make room to start the blue bike e-bike build and then we'll start the next day. Well, it's the next day I'm off to the races. I unload all my tools. I start getting to work on tearing apart the front forks of the blue Schwinn. I get them off fairly easily. I get the other Schwinn forks with the shock absorbers from the other bike on, and the two shorts. I had to put the other forks back on and risk it with those standoffs, but this is just too short and that sucks. Next, I try to pull off the crank so I can get to the bottom bracket, but the bottom bracket seems to be frozen on. I'm trying everything to get it off. but it's not budging and I'm stuck because I cannot pedal a bike with bad bearings. I go ahead and throw this bike off to the side. It's time to try another bike. Now I wasn't gonna try this bike originally because I do like this bike as a bike, 
but it's looking like it's going to be the safest option for me to be able to enjoy some electric action. The big problem I'm having with the bike right now is that I left it in the rain and that's never good for a bike and you're going to see that as I start to pull it apart. Let's start by reassembling the front forks and all the handlebars and everything I had to take off in order to get those forks off. I redo the bearings before I put everything back together because that's important to this build. Now the bike is standing, I had to pull off the bottom bracket on this bike and we've seen how well this has gone so far. Well here is nothing. A little bit of elbow grease to finesse the pedals off and we have access to pull the bottom bracket bearings off and then Ooh, that's a skip. Let's see. Why Rika? We have that bracket off. A little bit of disassembly, then I can show you how bad bearings get in the rain and why you shouldn't leave your bike out in the rain. Whoop, there it is. It looks like mud that came out of the mud. And it looks like a ton of rust just sitting inside the bottom bracket port there. Bikes weren't meant to be left in the rain. Don't leave them there, kids. Now, after I get the bearings done, I have a nicer and newer crank that I throw on and I get adjusted. And one of the things you can enjoy about a build like this is being able to put new parts, try new things, just to see how it works, how it feels. Next, I have to get all of the electricals off of the cruiser because I need all those to put on the new bike. And this is the part I've really been waiting for. Being able to put the disc brake onto the wheel and have it align and have it work. It takes a little bit of adjustments and then I get it spinning and give it a try. Oh yeah, it works. So now I just got to finish tightening everything up. Come on, man. Now I got to finish tightening everything up and adjusting it so that way I can start getting ready for the electrics. Now, e-bike batteries are deceptively heavy. They will surprise you with their weight. They'll end up being unwieldy while you're trying to set them up where they're supposed to go on the frame. And now it's just a matter of hooking up the rest of the electrics, except for I'm running out of daylight. And we're getting into the night, and there's almost no more light to see. But I still gotta put away my tools, so I pull out a light so I can put away my tools. Can't leave your tools out. Now it's the next day and I'm working on a completely different bike. This bike is going to go to my dad and then when I drop this bike off to him, he's got an important part for me. I go ahead and take the bike to him and when I come back, I have the best handlebars ever. These handlebars are super important for putting me in the correct riding position so that way I don't fall at the slightest bump. It'll be easier for me to recover, I don't have to worry about breaking my arm again. The next step is setting them up with all of the new equipment that I have, including new shifters and hand brakes for this bike. With the shifters comes new derailleur cable that I have to run through all of the existing tubing. And then I have to make some slight adjustments to make sure the derailleurs shift in line with the gears. All part of the process. I finish setting up the shifters and then I start wiring everything in, including the head unit, it's a lot of work and I end up working into the wee hours of the night again. It's late and I have everything together, but I still need to test drive this bike. I know it's dark, but I go ahead and take a chance anyway. You may notice me walking the bike back, and you're probably asking yourself, why? Well, I'll tell you there is a reason, and I will explain it here in a second. All right, you gotta keep your voice down. My dog's taking a nap. So I took this bad boy for a ride last night, and there was a few things that did it scared me. For instance, this seat hurts and also I can't shift because it's blocked by the handle grips and also this light just shakes all over the place it shakes even more when I try to use the brake this brake has the vibration of death meaning when I try to use it with this tire it does this and it makes the handlebars do that and I just think it's because it's too heavy to use a disc brake on this system 
And just imagine if I would have discovered that on the cruiser build. You see, that's why I feel very confident in the decision I made to abandon this build. I probably wouldn't be alive right now making this video if I had made that choice to follow through on this build. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch back and just use these brakes up here just to keep me alive. After I switch everything out that needs to be switched and then make the necessary adjustments to the brakes and all the other little systems, and then I adjust this headlight, like that, yeah. I go ahead and walk back inside because I think I'm finished. I'm gonna wash my hands and wash my hands of this whole thing. So how does it ride now? It rides fine and it looks even better. It rides just as good as it looks, even though I don't make it look that great. After making the adjustments from that scary ride the night before, I feel like I got it really dialed in. So let's take a look at all the pluses and minuses of this project and everything that works and doesn't. This seat that I bought off of Amazon two years ago is the most comfortable seat ever, and I had to take it from my other mountain bike in the corner, but it fits here just fine. This light mount is a better situation than I had on the cruiser with just a couple pieces of rubber holding it on. I can ride it and you don't see it vibrating all over the place. You sure don't. These brakes ended up being a really solid choice. They stopped the bike immediately without issue. The disc is still on there. It didn't work, but it's already bolted on. So I just decided to leave it there because it's too much trouble to take off. I'll get it off the next time I get a flat tire. Oh, look, Layla's gonna give me a kiss. Love you, Layla. These handlebars are absolutely top notch. They give me all the vroom vroom and keep me from falling over from a bad back position. The standoffs aren't gonna rip because this is a solid fork. I just have to not take the tire off too many times and it'll be fine. It took a bunch of days and a bunch of tries, but I think I have the e-bike that's gonna get me around for the longest time. Hopefully I don't have to make any more changes. And that's it for this time. Join me next time when I either get back into fixing Xboxes or I finally show off that thing that was sitting behind the e-bike the whole video. See you then.